Liz Truss took to the Telegraph newspaper at the weekend to complain about how she was ousted from Prime Ministerial Office in the autumn of last year. And she's got a point. Sunak lost a leadership election against her that he was highly favoured to win. In the end, it wasn't even close. A lot of high-ranking Tory MPs had publicly thrown their weight behind Sunak early on. And when his campaign fell apart and Truss became Prime Minister, they found themselves out in the cold. Well, of course, they didn't like that, did they? So at the first opportunity, they stabbed her in the back. Truss announced her mini-budget in September, announcing huge tax cuts. It was brave, gutsy, radical, and exactly the kind of risk that this country needed to get us back on our feet. It plunged the markets into turmoil. Of course it did, because no other developed nation was doing it. No other Western leader had the temerity to go against the socialist economic global consensus. She was going to cut taxes to stimulate growth, to get people spending, to encourage investment into this country and to lure international talent to our shores. But as soon as the markets went off the rails, poisonous careerists Sunak, Hunt and their cronies took the opportunity to attack Truss just over a month into her premiership. No one could have expected them to have the audacity to try and oust her so soon. But as slowly, one by one, her fickle cabinet deserted her, throwing someone else under a bus to preserve their own careers, the writing was on the wall. She was finished. The voice of the Tory party membership was contemptuously silenced, and Sunak and Hunt slithered their way into Downing Street with absolutely no democratic mandate. And what are we left with after three months of their sneering tax rate assault on middle-income Britain? A week ago it was announced the UK now has the lowest GDP growth rate of any G7 country. Essentially, we've got the worst performing economy in the developed world because of Sunak and Hunt's cripplingly high taxes and out of control public spending. A housing market in long term decline, almost every service industry on strike, energy companies continuing to get away with criminal extortion. This is what the Sunak Hunt government has done for this country. If the Conservative Party had some backbone and integrity and had thrown their support behind Truss's traditionally conservative tax cuts, would the markets have settled? Of course they would. Would we be seeing significant levels of growth now? Of course we would. Instead, we have socialist economics, high taxes and high public spending by the back door. We have a Labour government in all but name. There's nothing Tory about Sunak or Hunt. They're committed to a policy of pragmatic socialism not because they believe it's what's best for the people of this country, but because they feel it's what looks best in the eyes of the international community, and also because it will serve them both very well in their future careers. When the Conservatives are kicked out of office at the next election, Sunak and Hunt can expect to be rewarded with long and lucrative careers, a seat at the table of the corporate globalist elite. These two are unelected sociopaths who've plunged us all into poverty to serve their own interests. And in every media appearance they make, their open contempt for the British people is quite obvious to behold. Please do like and subscribe and support my content via PayPal or Patreon by following the links below this video.